Well, in this video, I'm gonna be telling you how I changed the factory Toyota stereo in my GX Land Cruiser. And if anyone doesn't know what a GX Land Cruiser is, it is what they call the poverty pack. It has no features whatsoever. It still has a key start, doesn't even have a push button start. It only has front speakers and it came with, let's have a look here. Yep, this. It looks like it came out of a 2002 Toyota Camry, but no. It came out of a 2014 200 series Land Cruiser. It did have Bluetooth. It worked for a little while. You know when it failed? Well, it failed when I picked up the car just after I had the engine rebuilt. Sorry, the second time I picked up the car after I had the engine rebuilt. Because if you remember the story, and if you don't, you can have a look at it in the video up above right now in the card. But I picked up the car and it overheated and it didn't work, had no power, had fault codes coming up. So I took it back, drove all the way back, two hours home, two and a half hours home, and then had to go back a week later and pick the car up the second time. And I was about halfway home in the car with the engine actually working this time. And the bloody Bluetooth stopped working on that radio there. Now, I obviously wanted to upgrade it, but the engine rebuild seemed like a little bit more of a priority at the time. But I was quite upset and I didn't even come home in the car. I stopped at the car stereo place and bought an Alpine. Now, uh, everyone's got their own favorite brands. I particularly like Alpines. So I stopped in at the auto parts store on the way home and picked up an Alpine ILX 107 deck and or head unit and put that in. Um, it's good, it was able to work with the steering wheel controls, but the most important thing for me was that it had wireless CarPlay because having to plug your phone in to use CarPlay is a waste of time as far as I'm concerned. Those quick trips to the shops, you just wanna leave your phone in your pocket, you don't wanna to have to muck around, and it's been really, really good. Now this was a couple of years ago now, so that's probably an older model, but it still works really, really well. What I particularly like about having CarPlay is the fact that I can use Google Maps and Waze. Waze will give me the speed from the GPS because as we all know, and if you don't know, you should know that your speedo in your car is most likely out by up to 10 kilometers per hour. And having the GPS speed there is really good, but Waze also gives you alerts about things that are left on the road, cars stopped on the side of the road, roadworks, and it also tells you where speed cameras are because it's user driven and users can report speed cameras and speed traps and police and those sorts of things. Now, I've actually got a video about speed and speeding that I wanna do. Um, I've had it written for months and I'm, to be quite frank, a little bit scared to post it because I know how polarizing it's going to be. And despite polarizing being good for YouTube views, um, it's something that I haven't quite worked out how I want to present yet, but that will be coming at some point in the future. But it is easy to get done by a speed camera, even when you are trying to follow the speed limit. Sometimes they do put them in places that, let's just say you only have to be not paying attention for a split second and then you can get caught. So it's nice to have a little bit of a warning come up on Waze, but I really love having the satellite view when I'm off-road um, on Google Maps. That's really, really handy when you're trying to find campsites, you can actually look for the clearings. Um, you can see tracks that aren't necessarily on maps. Very, very cool. So there's a lot of really good things about having CarPlay. Obviously the most important thing is that you can use it for music and we do a lot of that as well. Now one of the very first things that I did when I put the deck in was then I had to put rear speakers in because the GX Land Cruiser doesn't have rear speakers. Now, Toyota did a lot of really strange things when it came to the GX Land Cruiser. Uh, the climate control is one. Uh, they took the climate control out. The climate control came in all of the other models of Land Cruiser 200 series, but in the GX, they redesigned an entire dash um, control system, which you would have thought would cost more than just using the one that they already had developed and were mass producing. And it's a really painful setup because you have to push the temperature all the way up if you want it to be hot. And then if you want it to be cold, you have to push it all the way down. If you just try and hold the button, it takes forever. Same with the fan speed. So, you know, especially in say autumn when it's cold in the morning and hot in the afternoon, you've got to constantly be changing when you leave or go to work or come home from work, 
all the way up and down from hot to cold and it's just a ridiculous thing. But anyway, they did all that sort of stuff. Um, they also, as we said, removed the key start or the push button start, put a key start in. I can understand that because there might be some, you know, farmers or, you know, people um, in the older generations that think that that's more their style. So fair enough. But what they did was they changed the door cards so that they didn't even have holes for the rear speakers. So I actually had to go and get a Stanley knife and, uh, and cut holes for the speakers. Ridiculous. Anyway, at the time, I just put some uh, reasonably cheap but not super nasty uh, Kenwood three-way speakers. They were just ones that were uh, low profile. They were going to fit in the doors, no problems. Threw them in and that made it sound better, especially along with the deck. But the thing was that these Toyota speakers They're absolute rubbish. I mean, look at the size of the magnet. <laughs> it's just laughable. So I finally went out and bought myself some of these IC690TOY plug and play focal speakers. Slimline six by nines with tweeters, directional tweeters in them that you can move around. Um, you can get a kit where you can replace the uh, dash mounted speakers with tweeters. I didn't do that at this point. I just wanted to see if I could get a little bit better sound and see how it went. And to be perfectly honest, I'm actually really happy with it. I do have a little subwoofer under the seat. I've had that for, well, yonks, ever since I got the car, because I pulled it out of the ute. And um, with the six by nines, uh, the subwoofer and the Kenwood three ways in the back, actually, it's, it's really, really good. So I'm just gonna show you, um, if you're interested in how these focal speakers plug and play into your Land Cruiser, if you've got a Land Cruiser, um, we're gonna go stick them in now and uh, you can see that they're sort of plug and play. Um, I guess the plugging bit was right, but yeah. Anyway, let's go have a look. It was at this stage that I realized these were not going to fit without modifying them. You would have thought that being plug and play for all these different Toyota models that they would have just put a couple of extra holes in these so that they would fit in the 200 series Land Cruiser as well. You do have to drill a couple of holes through the plastic. It's not a big deal, but it just would have been nice if those holes were already in there. Alrighty, so yeah, they do plug in to the Land Cruiser and probably most Toyotas reasonably easily the plug does fit and it's got an adapter so i guess if there's a different plug that it will still work um they do fit sort of i mean you have to drill those holes you would you would have thought that you just put a couple of extra holes in there to make it fit a couple of different toyota models if that was kind of the whole thing was the plug and play thing you know but what people do is they often just modify and cut out the old speakers from these sort of plastic mounts here and use those to mount um, whatever brand of Slimline 6x9 you'd like in your car. And that's potentially a little bit cheaper, but you know, if you want a decent quality 6x9, it's gonna cost you, you know, a couple of hundred bucks anyway. These are $300. As you can see when I opened the box at the start of the video, and $300 for something that I know is going to fit. Um, it's not, I'm not gonna have to modify the door, I'm not gonna have to do anything crazy. And I mean, the, the wiring is not an issue. I mean, to solder on a couple of, or even crimps, you just you can just put a couple of butt connectors on there. It's not hard to do that. So the whole plug and play thing is, I don't know, a bit of a farce. But what I do like about it is that they do fit and they do sound good. They are really, really good speakers. I'm actually super impressed with them. I had heard people say that the focal speakers were pretty good and they definitely are. So um, for 300 bucks, it's a really good way to really bump up the sound quality. If you've got a, an older Land Cruiser that doesn't have a very good sound system, or if you've got a GX, even in a new one, I, I imagine they're rubbish. Um, if you've got a Sahara, maybe the sound system's okay. I don't know, I don't have a Sahara, I can't afford one. But if you wanna upgrade your sound system, do the deck, do the speakers, and uh, it's really not that hard, guys. You can, it's all, 
you can get adapters and everything to plug it all in nowadays. It's really, really straightforward. So as usual, hope you found it interesting. If you did, click like, subscribe, yada, 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 and I'll see you next time.